Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 89 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm recording this one. Oh, it's 420. Ha <laughs> ha, 420 blaze it, am I right? On Sunday. <laughs> Not blazing it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why I would be. I don't know why. Who, who the fuck chose 4.20pm as the official blazing it time? Like, to me, that seems like... Like, if I don't smoke weed, I don't do drugs, I never have. But if I was to, I don't ever see myself doing it at 4.20. Like, that, that to me seems like the most inconvenient time to smoke weed or do any kind of drugs. You know, like, a 4.20... You're either at work, or you're coming home from school. Like, could you imagine if everyone actually lit up at 4.20? Or even on a fucking weekend. Like, it's 4.20, man. Like, if it's a Sunday, surely you want to smoke weed at, like, either 12pm, because you got no hobbies, or fucking 8pm, because you're hanging out with your friends at a house party. But 4.20pm, like, that's fucking... Why would you do it at that time? You know what I mean? Wait... What are you going to do? You're going to smoke weed at 4.20pm and then you're going to get really hungry and be like, Fuck, I've only got 30 minutes to get to the bakery before they close. Not even. Shit, it's on Sunday. Shit closes at fucking 4. Although I don't think it was 4.20 on a Sunday. that, that It's just 4.20 at any time. Or do they mean 4.20am? Now nah, that's even more inconvenient. Like, you'd have to set a fucking alarm. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to set an alarm, like to wake up at 3.50, have a shower, brush your teeth, have some breakfast, just so you could light up at 4.20 in the morning and then crash your car on the way to work and total it, take out a family of three. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's just my thoughts on the whole 4.20 thing. Don't do drugs, kids, but if you are going to do drugs, at least do it at fucking 12 or 8 p.m. That's really, that's, that's, it should be like 8 p.m. Blaze it with friends or 12 p.m. Smoke weed alone and then be like, I don't have any hobbies. I'm so bored. What did I do this week? Um, oh uh, yeah. Quick update on the belt, everyone. Uh, a bit of a belt update. I know all of you guys have been incredibly invested in this belt ever since I screamed myself hoarse fucking last week. Do you know that I actually, um, Rocked up to work the next day at the radio station and I couldn't speak properly because I spent fucking 15 minutes screaming about <laughs> about the, sh the expected shipping time of a fucking belt. <laughs> yeah, sorry boss, I can't do the radio show. I was angry about a belt and I lost my voice. Sorry everyone, um, I know it's really inconvenient. I know we're really trying to prove ourselves to the radio station so we can get extended... For next year, but um, you know, if these cunts sent my belt on time, I wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be in this position. So you know, get your shit together, belt manufacturers. Just ship your shit when you're supposed to. Anyway, so basically, I bought a belt and I got it in the wrong size, but it was their fault because their sizing chart was fucking disabled. And then I ended up uh, sending it back, and they accepted the return. And then I bought the belt in the correct size, and then they were like, "Oh, we don't have it." The expected shipping time is literally anywhere between December this year and February next year. We didn't get as many as we hoped or expected. And then I was screaming about, well, did you hope that you would get enough orders? Or did you order enough fucking belts and then expect them to arrive, but then they different because but then they didn't, because those are two very different things. You can expect something because you did your fucking job, or you can not do your job and then cross your fingers and hope it all works out. Very different things, you fucking belt cunts. Anyway, so, as uh, I have been thoroughly abused for in the comments of uh, the podcast group, uh, because you've all d d rediscovered, this is, not an er this is not an unknown phenomenon in the Spearhead Sundays podcast, or anyone who knows me, or anyone who is a fan of what I do, uh, but every, every time it happens on this podcast, I get fucking abused for it in the Spearhead Sundays Facebook group. And that is because I, once again, fucking uh, said the months of the year in the wrong order. 
Um, surprise, surprise, ladies and gentlemen, old fucking failed high school doesn't know the months of the year. Um, so they sent me an email saying it would be anywhere, it would arrive anywhere between, um, December and February. And I read that last month in October and I read December and I was like, oh, sweet. That means it could come next month. Or, or next, I read it last week and I was like, okay, sweet. So if it's coming in December, that means I could get my belt next week. That's sick. Uh, and then uh, I got absolutely fucking abused for it because I forgot that November exists, <laughs> which we are currently in now. And I don't know why I forgot November exists because my fucking comedy special is in November. Like that, that really should be ingrained in my mind that November definitely exists because I'm doing the most important thing of my career in November, halfway through it. I knew, I knew that my special was three weeks away in November, but I still forgot that November existed. When the fuck did I think November was? After December? Oh yeah, that's the new 12th month. November now happens after December. We have Christmas and then we have a month full of nothing and then we have January fucking idiot. Anyway, thank you very much for abusing me uh, in the Facebook group, guys. Really do appreciate you guys keeping me on point. I can absolutely guarantee you that it will happen again, because uh, as much as uh, I do think um, I should know the months of the year, as much as I do think it is a life skill that most adults should know, or not even adults, most fucking children over 12 should know the months of the year, I still think it's funny that I don't know them, and I love the reaction that I get when I say the months in the wrong order, so I'm probably never going to learn which fucking order they are in. Let me do it, alright? I might get this right because I have been reminded about it, but January, February, 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 no one knows how to say that fucking month, March, April, May, June, July, August, September... October, November, December. Pretty sure I'm going to pat myself on the back. Listen to this. Pretty fucking sure that I got those months of the year right. Shouldn't be impressed with myself, but hey, I am. So, <laughs> do you, dude, you wish you were impressed by yourself just for reciting a basic life skill. Like, if you're, if you're not impressed by yourself for remembering the months of the year, fuck, you must, like, your life must suck. You must actually have to achieve something for you to go, fuck, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I walk down the street without tripping over. I'm like, fuck, I'm the best human ever. <laughs> so that's my belt update, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And yes, I don't know the months of the year. What else did I do this week? Sorry, I'm, I'm fucking moving around this episode because I'm, again, recording this at my girl's house on a stupid fucking small table. And I, I was just on the floor before. I started this thing on the couch, and then I moved to the floor, and then I'm back on the couch again. So I'm, that's that's going to continue throughout the hour, ladies and gentlemen. What else did I do this week? Oh, I, f I finally, finally fucking finished my Stephen King book, It. Um, man, what a good book. But fuck, what a long book. Who needs to, who needs 1300 pages? I'm convinced, I'm not convinced that book needed 1300 pages, man. 1300 pages, that is like, that's like four regular sized books. I don't know how they, I, I have a Kindle, so that's how I read my books now. I don't know how the fuck you would read a book that big. Like, how do you turn the pages? How do you hold that thing up without getting fatigued? How do they put that on a bookshelf without it tipping the whole fucking store over? Wouldn't even tip a shelf over. You just put like a hundred copies of it in the in the storage unit behind the bookshelves, and the whole fucking store would tip to the left. Like a book doesn't need to be that big. Oh, actually, I I, I was thinking that maybe it doesn't need to be that big, but now finish now that I've finished reading it, man, it was a fucking awesome book. I highly recommend it. Um. And I've also seen, I also saw the movie It, um, and uh, the book shits all over it, and because there's no way you can condense 1300 pages into two movies. It's fucking awesome. Um, I really do recommend reading it. And it's, it's kind of spooky, man. You know what I figured out? I think I, I'm a pussy when it comes to horror movies. I wasn't scared by It, the movie. I didn't, I didn't, that one wasn't very scary at all. But I'm a fucking pussy when it comes to scary movies, but I absolutely love horror books. I don't know why. Because I knew that I loved horror, 
But every time I would see a movie, I would regret it. Like I'd be like, I would, I would read the plot on Wikipedia of a horror movie and be like, man, that sounds like the fucking coolest shit ever. And then I would see the trailer of it and piss my pants because I'm a little bit spooked. Oh, it's a ghost. What if they're real? They're not real. But what if they were? And then I can't go to the bathroom at night <laughs> for like three months. So I, I've banned myself from scary movies. Um, but uh, but I love the horror genre, and and I, I think that's my I think that's my way in, guys. Is I'm going to start reading horror books. Um, and, uh, horror comic books. I've read, uh, Stephen King's It, that was fucking phenomenal. I've also started reading a, a short story collection by Stephen King. I've read The, The, The Mist, uh, and that's fuck. that was a fucking great book. And then also I've been reading, like, the, the Horace Heresy science fiction books, and they're full of, like, demons and, and, and grim dark shit. So I'm really enjoying that. Uh, that's that's my new thing that I'm getting into, ladies and gentlemen, is horror movies and books. Oh, if you want to read a really fucking good and scary comic book, check out Witches by Scott Snyder. It's witches, but instead of an I, there's a Y. So, witches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not going to enjoy it now, because every time you read the fucking book, you're going to be like, witches. <laughs> oh, man. I just thoroughly amused myself there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you laughed at that because I fucking loved it. Man, I'm funny. I don't, I don't even give a fuck if, you, if you're like, dude, that wasn't funny at all. I don't care. Fuck you. Enjoy your train ride, you cunt. I hope I bore you to death just by going, with itches <laughs> And then laughing at myself. Man, I'm the best comedian alive. And you know what? I will never say that on stage because I 100% understand that that was only funny to me. I think that's the biggest struggle with being a comedian is the funniest shit you come... Like, the things that you think are the fucking funniest things in the world you know you can't say on stage because they just don't make sense or they're fucking stupid. Anyway, so I should start talking about things that are actually kind of humorous before I start explaining uh, the kind of in-joke that only I understand and the in-joke is with myself. Because I'm just going to sound like, once again, a fucking schizophrenic with no mates. Which I'm okay with. I got the confidence to pull it off. Walk into a bowling alley with no friends talking to myself. Ah, you know, I'm going to fucking strike. <laughs> um, I went to my, um, my five-year high school reunion. The, uh, this happened actually last week. I forgot to talk about it in the podcast. I went to my five-year school reunion um, recently. And that was, that, was a, that was a trip out, man. From, cause, cause I failed high school like horrendously. I absolutely tanked the fuck out of high school, essentially on purpose to uh, to give my. I think subconsciously I tanked high school on purpose to give myself no other option but to pursue comedy. I think that's what I, looking back on it, I don't think I had the self-awareness to realize that's what I, what I was doing. But now that I look back on it, I was like, yeah, I was, I found comedy in, in like year 12. That's when I first started doing shit online. And then towards the end of year 12, I was like, fuck, I would like to try stand-up comedy. And I didn't try it for like a year after that. Because I've been doing comedy for almost four years now. It'd be like three and a half years or so that I've been doing it. Almost four. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that, that I, I tanked high school on purpose so that I would have no other option but to uh, pursue stand-up. And it was fucking, um, it was cool going back there. Like, uh, it wasn't, you know what it was? Five years, it's not really much of a reunion because all of the people that I went to school with, I still see, like, like very irregularly. Do you know what I mean? Like, five years is not enough time for people to start losing touch with others entirely. Like, I still see people out at nightclubs, or if someone has a 21st birthday, I'll see maybe 20% of my school year there, just because people were friends and they remained friends. I think 10 years is the really big um, high school reunion, but, um, anyway, so I go into this high school reunion, and, uh, it was, it was kind of embarrassing, man, 
Like, I want you to know, I'm going to tell the story of what happened, and I want you guys to know, I'm not bragging at all. This is exactly what happened, and everything that people said, I really didn't agree with them. I walk in, and the principal of the school, who was principal when I was there, is standing at the door, greeting everyone. And I come in, and she's like, oh, Lewis, oh, look, everyone. It's the, it's the famous guy. He's made it. You've made it. You're famous. You're, and, and immediately I'm like, ah, this sucks. I didn't think this was going to happen. If this keeps happening all night, this is going to be fucking shit. Because, ladies and gentlemen, not famous, all right? If, if I can leave my house and I don't have 35 paparazzi following, following me down the street... Uh, let me tell you something, not famous, all right? I have every now and then a, a few people coming up to me in the street and they, they go, hey, hey man, I like your videos, I like your stand-up, can I get a photo? And I go, yeah, sure. Not famous, at best, kind of a little bit known, all right? Not famous though, mm, no. If you can go into a shopping center without causing a fucking evacuation alarm, not famous. Okay, if you can't call up uh, a fucking restaurant and get them to shut down operations just so they can take a photo of you having dinner there, not famous. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So anyway, I walk in and the principal starts yelling about, oh, you're famous, you've made it. She gives me a big hug and she was nice and I said hello. And But all I could think of was, I'm pretty sure the last real conversation I had with you was you trying to expel me because I was I was failing high school basically on purpose. And now because I have a few Facebook likes and a show on Triple M Modern Fucking Digital, <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks that I'm famous. It's fucked. Anyway, and then I walk in and they, they get you to write your name down. No, there are two ladies that write your name down for a name tag. I don't know why. I think that's mainly for like the 20 year uh, fucking reunions where everyone looks like shit and you can't even remember what they look like because they look depressed and they've got a mortgage. But anyway, they gave us the name tags. And so this woman's writing down the fucking name tag. And the principal, I thought that was done. I thought that famous shit was fucking done. Then she comes up, she goes, do you know whose name you're writing down right now? And I was like, fuck. If they, if they don't know who they're writing down, mm, not famous. And she goes, this is Lewis Spears, he's a, he's a comedian, he's on radio, he's famous. And then the women were like, oh, I don't know who the fuck this cunt is. <laughs> anyway, so we go in and thank God everyone else was basically normal. All of the people that I went to school with were, were fine. It was just the teachers that were weird. I don't know, man. It's like, it's like as soon as, I, I guess, I guess older people just don't understand this fucking Facebook shit. Like anyone can get a hundred thousand likes on Facebook. You just drop a couple bang of videos and you, and you're fucking there. Or, or, or if you, or if you were born with a great rack and some basic makeup skills, you can hit a million faster than I can hit 200 K. <laughs> Thank fuck all the rest of my people, all the rest of the, the high school, pe the people that I went to high school were normal because they, they see shit. They get, they get it. And, um, and it was funny, like the teachers were, the teachers obviously thought that I was doing the best out of, out of everyone, like career wise. And, and I'm just thinking like, like one of the teachers comes up to me and he goes, Hey man, I saw you're on triple M and I just couldn't be fucked explaining the difference between triple M, which is a huge achievement and triple M modern digital, which is like. Yeah, we'll put you on Modern Digital. If you don't fuck it up, maybe we'll put you on regional radio in fucking three hours out of whoop whoop. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered explaining the difference between real, like, Triple M and then Modern Digital, so I just said, yeah, whatever. And then he's like, oh, wow, man, that's awesome. So you're on radio and stuff? Oh, that's, that's awesome, bro. I knew you could do it. And I was like, no, you didn't. You gave me detention all the fucking time for being a smart ass. You weren't like, hey, man, you're really good at being a fucking asshole. I reckon you can make a career out of that shit. Remember me when you're on AAA Modern Digital. No, you just put me in Saturday detention. I had to put my fucking school uniform on at 10.30 on a Saturday and show up to school for two hours. That's what you did. That's the extent of your belief in me. <laughs>
And then, so he goes, oh, wow, man, that's, that's awesome. And then he goes, good money, yeah? And starts doing that thing where people rub their, their, their two index fingers and their thumb together. You know, that one, like, bah, money. And again, I just couldn't be bothered explaining the difference between Triple M and Modern Digital. So I just went, I, I didn't say yes. I just went, well, you know, I just did that. And, and then I'd let him believe whatever the fuck he wants to believe. Like, I didn't want to walk in there and be like, hey, I know you think I'm killing it, but I live with my parents and I'm broke as fuck, can't afford a car, don't even have my license, I'm 23 years old and my girlfriend drives me places all the time, killing it, famous. I didn't want to do that shit, so I just tried to enjoy myself and, and talk about this as little as possible. And now, it was just interesting, like, talking to other people who, like, in my year level, and I was like, man, just be... People think that I'm doing the best here because I have a few fucking Facebook likes. I talked to a guy who's a scientist working in creating different new kinds of plastic and, and different kinds of paint. Like, not the colors paint, but like actually chemically creating new kinds of paint to be more weather resistant or... Whatever the fuck they need, he has to figure out how to make paint before it, it's, it before it even has color in it. Like the 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 actual chemical properties of what can dry and not get destroyed by the sun, but also be injected with color so that it's the right color. That guy, whatever the fuck that job is, I can guarantee you he's making three times what I am. And by the end of the year, he's going to be a fucking millionaire because he's going to invent the new, the new fucking car paint that can have sparkles in it and be resistant to crashes. I don't know. I don't pretend to understand. And then I talk to another guy that's a fucking engineer building bridges that are earthquake resistance and he's going to go over to China and build fucking high-rise buildings that can sway whenever they have an earthquake so they don't fucking fall down and kill 10,000 people living in the building. That guy, doing way better than me, but that guy will never get any fucking Facebook likes because he's come up with a new blueprint for a fucking tower that can go 100 stories up and, and not be demolished by a tsunami. That guy, that guy needs to go fucking viral with his blueprints. But instead, here I am telling dick jokes and everyone goes, Oh fuck, he's on Triple M Modern Digital, he must be a millionaire. No, I'm not! I'll f I, like I've said repeatedly, ladies and gentlemen, when I start making a lot of money, I'll fucking let you know. But at the moment, I'm making $300 a week. Actually, no. I gave myself a pay rise because of this radio thing, because they're paying us peanuts because they're making nothing because there's no ads, but uh, they're paying us something. So, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, this is how much I'm now paying myself. Are you ready? $400 a week. Woo! That's still below minimum wage, considering that I work what is essentially two full-time jobs. So even if I was just working one full-time job, I could double my income in a fucking call center. But that's pretty cool, man. I used to be on t-shirt money. See, $300 a week when you live at home with mum, that's t-shirt money. So you can buy yourself, uh, and an, you can buy all your food for the week and you have, have enough left over to buy yourself a t-shirt if you want it. You, like, you know what? That blue t-shirt really suits my eyes and my skin tone. I'm gonna buy that shit. But not the $50 t-shirt, the $30 one. I'm gonna buy the $30 fucking t-shirt. That's what kind of money I was on. But now, now that I've given myself a pay rise and I'm on $400 a week, fuck that. That's, that's a big step up. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to officially announce that I am on jeans money. That's right. I can buy myself a nice pair of jeans if I want to. I can walk into the shop and be like, you know what? I'm gonna have the t-shirt and some fucking jeans. Woo! I've made it. I made it to jeans money. So, uh, I think you'll notice on my Instagram that I've been walking around in a nice new pair of blue jeans. Yes, sir, I have. I bought my, I got a pay rise. And then I got to the end of the week and I bought all of my food. I had bought a comic book. I didn't buy a t-shirt and I was like, fuck. I've got enough left over for a reasonably priced pair of blue jeans. So I went down to the Levi's store 
And I was like, hey, give me a size, give me a size 34 blue jeans, please. And then I walked out of that bitch wearing some fucking jeans. And I feel great. They say money can't buy happiness, and they are correct, but you can buy fucking jeans. Only if you earn $400 a week, though. It's a big step up for me, guys. Um, I, I'm living the life of luxury. I could buy <clears throat> next week if I want some more jeans. I mean, I have a black pair of jeans and a blue pair of jeans. I mean, I don't see myself needing another pair of jeans, another color. I don't see that happening anytime soon. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? The option is there. I've finally made it to the jean zone. And the next time, give me another 18 months. I'm pretty sure I was on $300 a week for, for over a year. So, you know, in, in 18 months, when I'm on $500 a week, what's that? I reckon that's like jacket money. Yeah, because what's a good jacket? Like a good jacket's like $150 to $200. Yeah, I reckon $500 a week, that's jacket money. When I hit the jacket zone, the jackpot... <laughs> I'll fucking let you know, alright? But yeah, school reunion was pretty interesting. What else happened to me this week? Um, oh yeah, I would like to reiterate how fucking good Levi's jeans are, man. If you need a pair of jeans, don't buy... Don't spend $200 on jeans. Don't buy $300 jeans or, or go to fucking Armani or Calvin Klein jeans. It's all fucking brand name shit. Go to the cunts who have been doing it for more than a hundred years. That's Levi's. Just buy yourself some Levi's. The place I went to, you could buy one pair and then get the second pair half off. Just go and buy yourself like two pairs of Levi's and you won't need any more jeans for the, for the rest of the fucking year. They're good, they look good, and they don't, they don't rape you on the price. So, you know, there you go. Levi's jeans, sponsor the podcast, you dogs. This is a big development, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sitting here lying on the couch like I'm uh, in a therapy session now. I, was, I tried kneeling on the floor. That was uncomfortable as fuck. I tried sitting on the couch and hunching over the desk. That was also uncomfortable as fuck. But what I've discovered now, ladies and gentlemen, is a new position that I like to call the, um, the therapist. And I'm lying here on the couch uh, looking at the roof. And I've got the microphone to my left and I'm just yelling into it. And you know what? I can already tell that in about 10 minutes I'm going to get really fucking uncomfortable and have to go back to the kneeling position or the squatting over the table position. Oh, I need a fucking... I wish I could get to table money. Gee, what's table money? A good table runs you like, like a nice table. Like a nice, really high, wide, and deep table. At least a grand, man, I reckon. Between $800 and $1,000. So what's table money? For you to buy a table, you'd have to be making $1,000 a week. So you would have to save up for the table. It'd take you a couple months, but you could buy it. Fuck, I can't wait for table money, guys. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm really after. You know, actually, you know what we should do? This is what we should do. In the in the in the Spear Sunday's Facebook group, I want you guys to like go through income in hundred dollar increments and tell me what kind of money that is. So here's here's I've only made it I've only made it to Jean's money. I have I've never progressed beyond four hundred dollars a week. So I'm gonna tell you my table. This is what I used to pay myself from comedy, and I, I'll let you know what I could buy with that. So $100 a week, that is food money, nothing else. $100 a week is enough to buy groceries for the week, and that's all, alright? I used to be on 100 bucks a week, I remember that, that fucking sucked. I could never do anything, never buy anything, but I could feed myself with dick jokes, that was pretty cool. $200 a week, now that is, you can buy food, and then you have about $100 left, that was like activity money. <laughs> so you could take your girl to the movies. I remember when I hit $200 a week, I was like, baby, we're going to see Transformers 5. And she was like, oh my God, wow, we haven't done anything for like two years. Fuck, Transformers, I hate that movie, but fuck, I'd like spending time with you. That was a good moment. $300 a week, that's t-shirt money. So you can get food, you can go to the movies, 
And then after all of that, you can buy yourself a medium range t-shirt, $30 or less. And now $400 a week, that's jeans money. Now, I am theorizing, I haven't made it there yet, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, from, my, from my projections, my scientific projections, my, all of the research that I've been doing, I've been doing some, out, some, uh, some mathematical equations on a whiteboard, uh, <clears throat> I've been talking about it philosoph- philosophically with many, many people, I am pretty sure that $500 a week is jacket money. A good jacket runs you anywhere between $150 to $250. I reckon $500 a week is jacket money. Now, what we need to figure out as a collective, as the Spearhead Sundays group audience, what is $700 a week? What kind of money is that? All right? I don't think that's rent money. Fuck, maybe it is. Maybe $700 a week is rent money. That's when you can move out of your fucking parents' house. I reckon that's what it is. All right, but 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 we're getting ahead of ourselves. All right, so five hundred dollars a week. Pretty sure that's jacket money. Six hundred dollars a week. What's that? Okay, because I would say that jacket money would also double as shoes money. You're not going to buy a jacket every week, but you might buy a pair of shoes once a month, or once every two months. You might buy a jacket once every two months. I oh, this is what it is. I reckon six hundred dollars a week is savings money. Yeah, that's what it is. Because you don't need to spend 600 bucks every single week, but you can't exactly move out and live comfortably on $600 a week. So I reckon $500 a week is jacket money, $600 a week is savings money, and once you hit the big 700 I reckon that's rent money. Yeah. Now, what I need help with, what's, suggest to me what is $800 a week, what's $900 a week, what's $1,000 a week, and fucking keep going up as high as you want I, in $100 increments. I want to know what kind of money is that. <laughs> okay? Post it in the Speared Sunday's Facebook group. If you haven't joined it, just search Speared Sunday's Facebook group. Request to join. I'll approve you and you can see all the shit fucking memes that everyone posted and all the abuse that I get for not knowing my dates. <clears throat> um, in unrelated news... Uh, I have been a bit slack on the video side of things. I mean, I put up a video on my second channel. I'm going to have a vlog out very, very soon. It's almost finished. But the reason why I haven't put anything out on my main channel is because, ladies and gentlemen, I've got an exciting announcement. Uh, The warehouse dream, the, the goal of having my own fucking production studio and warehouse, we're one step closer to it. What I've done on the suggestion of my uh, wonderful woman is I have, because with the radio, when I get home now, I get home at like 8 p.m. and I just can't film at home because one, I'm really fucking tired and two, everyone else is trying to sleep. All of the neighbors are really close to us. I don't need to be yelling cunt out into the fucking darkness, okay? I don't need to be doing that. I don't need to be waking up the neighborhood with, yay, cunts, welcome to Lure Review, and then swearing my head off because I keep fucking up takes. So what I've done, um, I, I just, uh, you probably hear me adjusting myself. I got sick of the therapist position. I'm going back to squatting over the fucking table. Oh, this sucks. What I've done, um, and I'm really excited about this, is I've actually uh, hired a storage unit. It's a 10 meter squared storage unit. So that's like three meters, 3.3 meters across each side of the cube. Maths! Um, and I'm turning that storage unit, instead of, of leaving shit in there and storing t-shirts or whatever the fuck people put in there, I've turned it into a little film space. So I'm setting up the bi-monthly bull, green screen, desk, chair, or, and, and all of the lights. I'm putting it in a storage unit. And now the storage unit is right around the corner from the radio station. So what I can do now is I can record the radio show with Luke write a bi-monthly bull episode, walk around the corner into my storage box, turn the lights on, put my camera on the tripod, and we're ready to fucking go. <clears throat> I've set up the perfect fucking space um, for this storage unit, and it's, um, it's um, how I'm paying for it is all of the Patreon money, because I don't, I don't touch the Patreon money. I only use that money to pay for the podcast, um, and the cost of creating videos, which, um, always goes up because I'm always trying to do new shit. But, um, 
what I've done is, is yeah, I've rented a storage unit. It's, it's such, a, it's a fucking sick idea. So, because the problem with filming at home always was home was where I lived. So I would have to pack away the lights and put away the tripod and there was never enough room because my bed was it took, took up half the fucking room and then all of the other shit that I use just to live, like my drawers and my clothes and just, you know, a normal fucking bedroom, there wasn't enough space to have two film sets like Bi-Monthly Bull and Lure Review. It got fucking horrible to live in and horrible to work in. So now I have this workspace <coughs> where... I can just literally go in and I leave the lights up permanently because setting up the lights to be perfect for the green screen and the camera angle, all that kind of shit, that was just time that was wasted and made me really fucking angry by the time it was to record. Now that's all eliminated because I can just leave it set up permanently in this fucking storage unit. So now... Um, ladies and gentlemen, I have my own fucking film space. I mean, it's no warehouse. It's no hundred meter squared warehouse. It's just 10 meters squared. It's like, a, it's literally a fucking cube, but your boy has his own workspace. I'm really fucking happy with it. And, uh, I think it's going to be great for content because now I can just go to the radio, write the video, film it in the storage unit, go back to the radio, edit it and upload it using their fucking Illuminati speed internet. It's, um... I think it's really good. I'll post a few photos in the Speared Sundays podcast group on Facey and on Twitter as well if you want to check out the box before it's been filled. And then I'm also going to be doing a vlog so you guys can see um, the how I, how I build it. So that'll be on the second channel. I think it's going to be really great. So yeah, apologies for not being uh, as consistent as I would like to on the main channel. But uh, that's the reason why I'm currently moving film spaces from my house and then setting it up in this storage unit. So it's taking some time, but uh, I think it's really going to be worth it. And it's just going to make me uh, so much more consistent because now I don't have to worry about filming times. Because like I said, I'm pretty sure I like filming at night time, but I just can't do it because it's rude as. But now that I've got these storage units, there's nobody ever in there and they're soundproof as well. I'm locked in my own thing. I'm just going to do it there. And uh, I think that's going to make me super, super consistent now. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and get a bi-monthly bull out this week by Thursday. I have, to, I, have, I have all of the news things that I want to cover. It's just a matter of whether or not the film space is ready in time. So, I'm just, just, just know I am fucking trying. It's just the radio, the comedy special, everything is... Everything is nuts right now, but as soon as this comedy special is done, I can just relax and focus on online stuff because I'm not going to be touring until September next year. So, yeah, it's uh, thank you for your patience. I do appreciate it. It is it is coming. All of the stuff is coming. I'm just as frustrated as you guys are. Um, speaking of the radio and the comedy special. Uh, Luke and I announced that we're taking a break from the radio show, Luke and Lewis, um, for the next two weeks. We're not going to be on radio. It was our decision because I need to focus on my comedy special and making that the best that it can be. I'm fucking really, really excited about it. I, it's going to be an awesome show. I know it's going to be great. Just need to focus on it and get all of the other distractions out of my mind so I can do this thing and, and nail it. You know, I'm putting... I'm putting so much money into it. Um, I've got so much of you guys' trust and responsibility on my shoulders. So I need to nail this thing and I can't walk on stage thinking, oh, I haven't put a video out this week. Oh, no, what am I going to talk about tomorrow? Oh, fuck, the radio show is next week and all, all, all that kind of shit. Can't have it in my head before I go on stage. I just want to walk on stage with one thing in my mind and that is I'm going to fucking kill this thing. So, um, yeah, I'm taking a break from the radio show. I'm still going to get a video out this week for sure, It's um, but maybe don't expect one the week before the special. I don't know. I'm trying to work it out. I just need to, um, yeah, I'm focusing on the comedy special because, yeah, I have to nail it uh, for you guys. Speaking of, there are now, um, the shows are selling out. So Friday, they're actually both nights, Friday and Saturday, November 17 and 18. It's in two weeks. Fuck, that's exciting. Woo, it's in two weeks. Um, November 17 and 18, uh, the seats that are available, um, there's, are just on the balcony. So the balcony that sits above and it's higher up, um, on Ticketek, the seating chart, it makes it look like the seats are bad. I know that's why they're only half full, but trust me when I say this, 
It's only a 300 seater and every single seat in there is fucking phenomenal. All of the bad seats are not even on sale because that's where we're putting the cameras. We did that on purpose so that everyone in the theater can see properly and, and soak in the cameras. Um, so there are no bad seats. The balcony seating is actually really, really good. You're not going to feel left out if you sit there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but be quick because there's literally 30 seats left to each night. Um, they're going to sell out very, very soon. Um, and I'm going to start making a lot of noise about it. So yeah, there's 30 seats left to each night. I would really recommend buying your tickets before I put out a video talking about it or yelling about it because they, they have to sell out for the special to be good. So I'm going to be making a lot of noise. Loosespears.com slash gigs. They're just 25 bucks each. Uh, check it out. All right. I'll see you there. It's going to be, yeah, if you like my stuff, if you've seen me before, you'll love this show. If you haven't seen me before, this is the perfect way to start because it will literally be the best show I've ever done in my life. All right? That's all I can promise you. Um, all right, shall we get to the worst part of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen? I think it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. All right? So if you don't know, this is the part where I answer questions from you guys, life advice questions, talk about gossip. If you have any cool stories, send it through to send me an email at podcast at lewspears.com. That's podcast at lewspears.com. Don't send it to any of my other emails because I just won't fucking read it. Podcast at lewspears.com. All right, here we go. Uh, how's it going, Lewis? I have a little problem that I hope you can help me with. I don't have a hobby, and I was hoping you could give me advice on the issue. Some context. I'm 18, I live in Brisbane at the moment, and I'm currently a university student, um, leading to the occasional lack of money and time, and I've tried basketball, but I ran out of time to practice it. I considered photography, but I couldn't afford any fancy cameras or equipment because I'm a uni student, and I'm considering starting a blog at some point in the future when my schedule clears up. I've asked a few people in my life, but no one will give me any straight answers, and I've tried doing activities with friends, but the few I have never seem to want to go out. Any help is appreciated. Have a shit one. And then he sent me another email, Hi, it's the boring cunt again. I was a bit out of it when I wrote that first email. After reading it, I think I should explain myself a bit more. I'm an engineering student focusing on electrical and IT. I enjoy jogging, uh, reading, and I play the occasional game on my computer. I quite enjoy working with images and designs on my computer. Pretty much a big fan of anything computer related. I think the most important thing is that I'm game to try pretty much anything. Again, help is appreciated. Have a shit one. Um, it's a hard one, man, not having a hobby. Uh, it, dude, it sounds like you want to do photography. It sounds like you're hung up on photography and uh, graphic design and stuff. And, dude, you don't need good camera gear to do that shit, man. One of uh, the best photographers that I know, uh, North Borders, check him out, North Borders on Instagram. He started out with shitty gear. And a lot of photography now comes down to how good you are at using Photoshop and you can get a pirated copy of Photoshop for free um, easily. I mean, I don't recommend, I try to pay, I don't try, I try not to pirate anything because, you know, I, I, I don't want people to pirate my stuff. I don't do that. But if you're really struggling for money, you can pirate Photoshop and get it for free. You don't need, like, dude, there are, there are people with millions of followers that take fucking iPhone photos for Instagram. I would, if, if, if photography seems like something you're interested in, don't worry about gear. You don't need good gear to do fucking anything, man. I, look at my YouTube channel. I started on a fucking $100 webcam. And uh, I was making videos and they were doing well, getting like 40,000 views. They, like, the quality doesn't matter. The, I mean, sorry, the quality matters... But it's the quality of the work, not the quality of the equipment. You can make fucking anything. Um, that's what I would really say to people is anyone who wants to do music production or, or whatever. Oh, but I need a thousand dollar keyboard. It's like, no, you don't. You can get, you can use GarageBand and make some good fucking music. I record this podcast on a $200 microphone and a Garage and GarageBand, which is a free fucking program. I don't edit it at all. And it's one of the biggest ones in the country. Like you don't need good gear. Sometimes I do this fucking podcast on my iPhone. I have access to multi-million dollar radio studios and I choose to do it on my fucking iPhone because the shit quality of the equipment is kind of the charm of this podcast. 
Like that's why people listen to podcasts because they don't want to hear super high value production radio shows or they don't want to hear like uh, mega pre-recorded storyboarded fucking um, story podcasts with sound effects and voice actors. They just want to see some cunt yell about a belt that he hasn't received yet for 15 minutes and then lose his voice with rage. You don't need good equipment, man. Um, if you want to do photography, start now with your fucking camera phone. Just go around and walk and take photos and most of the work is done after you take the photo with editing. That's the future of this shit. Same with video stuff. Like most of the work now that I do is not, oh, I need this lens to do this shot. I just fucking film it and then I make it look good and I do funny editing tricks in Final Cut. Like that's all that you can do is uh, don't worry about your equipment. Just fucking do that shit. And then eventually, if you get good enough at it, some people will start paying you and then you can buy good equipment and then you'll get even better. Because the thing with good equipment, it's nice to have stuff that costs thousands of dollars. But speaking as someone now because of Patreon and, and all that kind of stuff, I do have quite good film equipment. It hasn't made me a better YouTuber. Like, the thing that has made me a better YouTuber is doing YouTube again and again and again and doing it with shitty equipment. And now that I have good equipment, really, yeah, my stuff looks better, but that's not why I'm getting more views than I was before. No one's, no one's being like, oh, that guy spent $3,000 on a camera, I'll subscribe. People are being like, oh, he's funny, I'll check him out. That's all that that is. Some of my biggest videos have been filmed on a fucking webcam. That Pinger Pete video, the first one that I did, the police are planning a party that went mega viral back in the day, that was filmed literally on a fucking webcam, bro. Um, and that got like a million views. And that's what kind of started my online thing uh, as, as, as Lewis Spears was that video. So don't feel like you need good equipment to do your fucking... And again... It's your fucking hobby, bro. You don't. You just said you want a hobby. You don't want to make a job out of it. So why do you want to spend money that you don't have on something that you're not planning on making a career out of or making money out of? Just fucking go and do it because you enjoy it. You don't need good equipment. Um, and uh, if, if photography isn't for you, if anyone else is struggling with having a hobby, literally the only way to, to figure out what your hobby will be is to try shit. Keep doing new stuff. This goes for people who don't have a goal in life too. Just keep trying shit and eventually something will click. All right? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope that helps. All right, next question. Um... All right, where are we? All right, my girlfriend might be pregnant and Lewis Spears is my only hope. Oh, this will be a banger. All righty. Hi, Lewis. Um, if this gets read, call me Luke. All righty. Um, first off, I'm a massive fan of your podcast of, aside from this bit and your radio show. I'm really glad it got extended to the end of the year. Thank you very much. Um, Anyway, if you're willing to read this, I have a bit of a weird, uncomfortable situation. I'm currently 17. Ah, oh, no, you fucked up. You should have worn a condom. Don't fuck your girlfriend in the pussy. When you're 17, use a condom or put it in her mouth. Uh, <laughs> um, where are we? I just got distracted by my brilliant new song. Check it out on the radio, airing Monday to Friday. Um... At some stage in the not-so-distant past, I graduated from year 12. We had a big after-party, and my girlfriend and I were slightly drunk. She stayed over at my house, and due to my mild intoxication and her being on the pill, I, I decided to not use a condom. Big mistake! Always use a fucking condom, even if that bitch says she's on the pill. Because sometimes women lie, and sometimes women have AIDS. And it's just not worth it. It feels... It doesn't, you know what, it doesn't even feel that much better. It feels pretty good, no condom, but it doesn't feel, like it doesn't feel, like if I'm sitting there with fucking AIDS and I weigh 30 kilos and my brain's deteriorating, I don't be like, fuck, it was worth it because I my dick was like three millimeters closer to, to the pussy. Like it doesn't feel that much better. Just use a condom, folks. That goes to you as well, girls. Don't let a guy fuck you with a, without a condom. Because the... Yeah. And make sure he's still wearing it. Don't fall for that in that fucking stealthing shit. 
I swear to God, that should be a fucking... You should get a rape charge if you tell a girl you're, you're going to use a condom and then you take it off halfway through. You should go to fucking jail. Anyway, let's help out old, uh, old fucking wet dick here. Um, <laughs> I decided not to use a condom. You can figure out the messy details, but in case you didn't, I... I finished my business inside it. Oh, really? Is that how sex works? I thought you would have come in her fucking nose. Long story short, she was late for her period, and for a little while, we were pretty freaked out that she might be pregnant. This, however, is not my problem. Are you sure? She kept making me promise that if she was pregnant, I would stay with her, which I would have. (laughs) It's caused me a lot of stress and unnecessary trouble during my exams, which is fucked, but she's not pregnant. Oh, that's good. And to be honest, I've been considering where our relationship stands for a couple of weeks. I've told her that I love her, but mostly because she said it first, and I think I kind of do, or at least I did. No, you don't, man. If you did love her, you would fucking know. You ne- whenever if you, if you tell a girl or a guy that you love them, and then your brain goes, oh, I'm pretty sure that I do. I think that sounded like what I was supposed to say in in the like if you like if someone sneezes and you say bless you and you get the same feeling like after they sneeze where your brain goes oh you should say bless you like like that's what that is that's just a reflex of you being polite that's not you being in love like if she goes I love you and your brain goes oh you should say it back because it's polite like remember when when some bitch on the train sneezed and you said bless you Yeah, that's like this. Just say I love you back. Yeah, it's not love, man. Um, You would know if you did. Plus you're 17, dude. You don't know what you fucking like. You might turn around in two years and be like, you know what? I love dicks, man. Fucking put put a couple of those in my mouth. Um, Or at least I did love her. Not necessarily as much anymore. But at the same time, I can and pretty much always could quite easily find find things that I don't like about her and also the relationship. Yeah, that's also a relationship. You're going to fucking hate things about the person. Um, for example, my girl, uh, I fucking hate this. What She gets those earbud things, those cotton tips, and she cleans her ears and she leaves them on the coffee table. And I go, ew, yeah, put them in the bin. And she goes, that's not gross. That's natural. I'm like, it's not fucking natural. Put it in the fucking bin, you animal. All right? I hate that about her. But, you know, at, at the same time, we, we go to the movies together and I hold her hand and I think that's pretty cute. I like that bit, but the fucking earbuds is gross! Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to dump her over it. I'm just going to... That shit sucks, man. She needs, to, she needs to get over that. Maybe I will dump her. That's it. I'm fucking done. I'm going to email her right now. <laughs> Dude, imagine dumping your girlfriend of five years by fucking email. <laughs> the disrespect. Um... Uh, I can find things I don't like about her and also the relationship. She's incredibly clingy and needy, tells me she misses me and such less than 10 minutes after I've left her house. She's rather annoying sometimes in the way that she does a lot of things. But when we're together, it's amazing. I can't... F- yeah, that's just because you like her tits, but you hate her personality. That's what this sounds like. I can't falter at any time we are together, aside from the fact that she's generally a bit of a sook. Yeah, you hate this girl, man. I can already fucking tell. You don't like her. Um, that's a bit beside the point, though, because let's be real, who isn't? Uh, lots of people, man. My girlfriend's not a sook. Um, there's also the fact that, uh, there's at least two other girls who I had been interested in before her, and the part which I feel bad about, I'm still kind of interested in, in both of them. Like, danced with both of them while drunk instead of resolving an issue with my girlfriend interested. Yeah, so you're already thinking about cheating on her. Which, while not exactly impressive, looked like the coolest thing ever to my nerdy friends. It also doesn't help the situation that a lot of my closest friends are her close friends, so us breaking up with causing blah, 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 high school fucking drama problems, I guess. Blah. I guess what this world, world of text is trying to say is, do you think I should continue with this relationship with my girlfriend while not sure if I want to, or should I break it off while I figure my shit out? Do you think that second thing... Do you think that second thing is ever a legitimate option that ever works? Because honestly, I don't know idea. Point me in a direction and I'll commit to it fully. Thanks for hopefully looking at my bullshit. Oh, dude, you're going to do whatever I tell you? Point me in a direction and I'll commit to it fully. Okay, here's what you do, man. All right, you ready? First thing, 
thousand dollars get that shit together and put it straight into my uh, crowdfund for my comedy special then what you do is you get 30 friends and you buy all of the tickets that are left to Friday and you get them to come and you come and enjoy an awesome night of stand up then I don't care about your girlfriend do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> all I want is your money <laughs> uh, no man um, here's what I think and don't commit to it fully Listen to what I have to say, have a think about it, and make your own decision based on on other things happening in your life. I don't know who the fuck you are, I don't know who your girlfriend is, you've sent me a fucking three paragraph email, I'm not going to give you 100% the correct answer. That being said, dump that bitch, you don't like her. Bro, you've just spent three paragraphs being saying like, Hey, I really like having sex with this girl and uh, hanging out with her. She's good at conversation. Other than that, I hate everything about her and I want to fuck her friends. Just break up with her, bro. You're 17. You, you're not going to marry this girl. You're not even sure if you love her. You're 17. Break up with her. You don't like her. And uh, don't worry about your friendship group. She's also 17. You guys will forget about it in two fucking weeks. All right? There's my answer. You don't like this girl. Um, it's not fair to her. She sounds like a lovely girl. Um, she's just not the right bitch for you, all right? So before you cheat on her with her two mates, uh, like you basically did when you had a fight, how about say, hey, um, I'm sorry, but I don't like you anymore. I'm 17, not ready to commit to a relationship. Um, I hope you find the person that you like and who is ready for you, but unfortunately that isn't me and for me to continue this relationship would be disrespectful to you, alright? Dump her, don't be an asshole about it, don't do it by text, see her in person, break up with her, give her all of- Okay, what you do, go to your house, gather up every single one of her items that is at your house, every single one that she would ever have any reason to come over and collect after you break up with her and then suck your dick and trick you back into going dating her again, alright? Preempt that shit, get all of her shit, put it in a bag, don't be rude about it, go over to her house and say, hey, we need to have a talk, give her all of her shit and say, we need to break up, I'm sorry, and I think it would be really good if we didn't talk for, a, for at least a few weeks while we both get over each other. Thank you for the great times. I really enjoyed your relationship, but unfortunately, I am not the person for you because I cannot commit because I'm fucking 17. See you later. And then be real nice about it. Don't be a cunt. Just leave her, ghost her, delete her off all social media, all that kind of shit without being rude about it. Just say it's better for both of us this way. We will get over each other quicker if we don't talk to each other. And there you go. You're fucking clean. You don't have a girlfriend anymore. You can go and fuck those two girls without hurting anyone's feelings. All right? Thank you very much, mate. Give me an update on how that all works out for you. I hope it works. And, um, yeah, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Once again, please do get tickets to my comedy special if you're planning on coming. They're going to sell out very, very soon, and every seat needs to be filled. Also, for people who are asking, yes, the dress code is black. Um, you need to wear black. It doesn't matter if you're black t-shirt or black hoodie or whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter what type of clothing you're wearing as long as it is black. You can have a couple of, um, you can wear a black t-shirt with like a, a design on it, like my Try and Stop Me shirt. I don't care about that. Just as long as most of the t-shirt or hoodie or jacket or whatever you're wearing is black. Doesn't matter too much about what you're wearing on your pants because you're going to be sitting down. So as long as you come in wearing dark jeans or dark suit pants or a dark dress, skirt, whatever you're wearing, that doesn't have to be black, but what you are wearing on top must be majority black, um, because we are filming the crowd, and it's very important that that is. If you're not wearing black, the venue may take your seat away from you and move you right to the back of the theatre where the cameras cannot see you. That's the rules. Sorry if it sounds strict. If you don't have a black t-shirt, Target sells them for $6. Literally $6. You all have 6 bucks. If you can afford tickets to the thing, you got 6 bucks. All right? Thank you very much. And I will see you at the comedy special, lewspears.com slash gigs for tickets. There are 30 left to each night. It's balcony seating, but all of the seats up there are fucking sick. I've been there. Looks awesome. All right? Thank you very much for listening. That's the end of the podcast. I will talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one.